Hello everybody, how's it going today? So today is Sunday, May the 23rd, and it's about 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Manitoba, Canada. And um, this is, has, it's been doing exactly what I've been talking about, okay? And I'm not very surprising whatsoever. But before we get started, guys, you know, I don't really ever shill or even advertise my courses or my Discord group, but there's a lot of people that's showing a lot of interest, so I'll just talk about it for like 30 seconds to a minute, all right? Just go to philicon.com, www.philocone.com, and if you're interested in either the premium Discord group or interested in the beginner to advanced trading technical analysis course, oh, by the way, the premium Discord group, you're getting seven days for free anyways as a trial, so give it a shot. It might be worth your time. A lot of the people that are in the group, yeah, it's $35 a month, right? But if you're in the group, um, people generally make it back within like, you know, just one day of being there, put it that way. And the beginner to advanced trading course, it's been reviewed very, very, um, in a good way. A lot of people have said a lot of good things about it. I definitely plan to redo it. I wake up every single morning being bitter about me redoing it before. But unfortunately, I lost that laptop, right? That something happened to it. So uh, it's been on my mind every single day to review it because it's, there's a lot of things I don't like about it. And I think I'm going to be on top of it very soon. So if you guys are interested in the course, um, definitely pick it up, okay? <clears throat> Normally, it's about $450 on Udemy and $250 by crypto. But if you see this specific video, this one right here, I'm still going to do it for $150 American for you guys. And that's really, really freaking cheap comparing to $5,000 courses that are out there and not nearly as good as well. And if you are interested in the premium Discord group, right? Normally, if you pay $350, right, you get access for the entire year and you also get my course for free. But right now, for this video only, I'm doing it for $250 by crypto and you get a yearly pass to the premium Discord group and you also get the course for free um, normally individually they're about eight hundred dollars so you save about 75 percent i think it's a good deal and the reason why i'm doing this is because i don't have enough members yet i thought i'd be a lot busier in this discord group where i wouldn't be able to manage it but i'm i'm on top of it man i've got this group like really really well shaped right now anyways enough about the shilling so once again, that's 150 for the course by itself or 250 for the course and a yearly membership. Let's get on with this, guys. Bitcoin technical analysis now. I'm sorry I had to get that out of the way first, all right? I'm not going to talk about anything personal in this video, and we're going to keep it extremely professional from now on, all right? So we were looking at here, and I ended up drawing this exclusively for Bitcoin, where and I haven't touched it if you watch my old videos. Okay, we got that, we got that, we got that. So because of these points right here, we naturally ended up forming some sort of resistance, right? With a little bit of a bull trapped region that reached above there, naturally. And I was talking about a possible symmetric triangle and surely enough, we did do a symmetric triangle and break to the downside. We capitulated extremely hard. So now we can probably go to a more reasonable time frame and get a more accurate line that's drawn would you say that's a little bit more accurate now right, on a higher time frame it looks a lot better we have to consider some bull trapped regions right and i think that this is a very good depiction on the four hour so there's many ways to play this in my personal opinion okay but first of all i would like to talk about a macd in general okay in my opinion and from my personal experience and professional any time that we have, so we call this the X, X axis, okay? This is the zero line where the histogram is zero. And any time that the MACD hovers for too long or for too low below that zero line, it eventually wants to snap back to it. Because right now, what this is saying is that the bears are entirely in control and they can keep it far away from the bullish territory. So the bullish territory would be somewhere up here, right? If they maintained it up there and the bears couldn't push it back down, then that's what happens. So for example, right there, right? This is like April the 21st about, 
right? This is this is where it's still bearish or bullish territory, right? Where the bulls are basically maintaining it in a very high spot. Sometimes the bears counter and they begin, give it a big drop right there, but the bulls have been in control for uh, over a good year. But now the bears are actually in control. Eventually, though, <clears throat> this zero line, once this this MACD right here. So there's two because one's a slow moving one and one's a fast moving one. One takes a compilation of the 12 last moving bars and that's the fast one. And then one takes a compilation of the 26 last bars, which is the slow moving one. When the slow one meets the fast one, eventually something happens, but they both eventually want to snap to this line over here. Usually the blue one will always cross over first unless it's a major crossover and then we see something happen. So I called earlier that 24,000 was going to be a fairly significant number. But first of all, let's start off at the weekly and see how we are. What I do is I do something called I walk down the line. And walking down the line basically refers to, first of all, give yourself some, give um, Bitcoin the respect and look at it from a macro perspective in terms of from the picture of a big one, right? That, that it deserves. So you can get a feel for how it's been behaving over the past few months per monthly as well, right? By the monthly candle. So we see that this candle right here was the first candle in April to show a very bearish candle, a dragonfly doji type of candle. A dragonfly doji type of candle is one that has a very long wick to the downside, a smaller one to the upside, and a very, very thin body. And the body refers to the open and the close. So throughout this entire month, <coughs> excuse me, throughout this entire month, what we saw was that it opened on the high side because since it's red, right? And then it closed on a lower side. Whereas that's how you know it finished off red. And that's how these candles are actually determined, whether they're green or red. So if it opened there, for example, and then it actually closed at a higher price point, then it would have been green. But what this shows right here, we don't know exactly what happened throughout the month, but we can break it down. But what we can see pretty much is that this one here was for April 1st. So let's look for the April one. So what we saw was that it opened right there, right? And it closed right there. So you can see that the close is, is actually lower than the open. So what happened throughout the month was pretty much this. It opened right there. And then it most likely throughout the week got pushed up tried to push up above $65,000, but then based off of price, price action, how we read this, the bears ended up rejecting them, pushing them back down, pushing them back down, back down all the way over here. And the bears made quite an advance on offense and attack. And then the bulls eventually defended for that week and pushed them back up right there, getting the very first pin bar type of candle or a semi hanging man. And then the week after, what we see is we see a candle that opens right there. Bulls make a little push to the upside there, hence the little wick. And the bears make a gigantic push to the downside. Bulls defend just a little bit, but it causes a gigantic body. And then that's where we close. And then the next week after that, we see a tiny, tiny little wick where the bears did try, but the bulls made a huge advance pushing up to the top, pushing up to the top there. But the bears ended up defending, closing with a higher high than the opening of the last week. And then this week, you know, it could be interpreted in many ways, right? This is where it opens, right? It could have been pushed all the way down first, and then bulls defended, bulls pushed all the way back up, and then bears ended up closing right there. It could have been like that, or it could have been even it opened right there, or sorry, right here. Bulls pushed all the way up. Bears pushed all the way back down, and then bulls pushed all the way back up there. So we don't know if it's the bulls or the bears that went first, unless we actually go to a lower time frame. But nevertheless, what this summarizes is that the bulls made a really good attempt the very first week, and then they end up, the bears end up pushing all the way back to the downside, getting a body that says that the closing was actually lower than the opening. So this tells a wonderful story of how everything happens. And why is this important? It's important because if we can study the past, 
we can have a better idea of patterns that we can foresee in the future, right? So that's how I, I like to, for example, let me give you a really good example of how I learned something that I never knew until this year, okay? It's a coin called, US, uh, it's called Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi was one of my favorite coins to trade and I never learned this pattern until I saw it on Wi-Fi. And then once I started seeing it on a lot of other coins, I realized to myself that RSI, when it goes down a certain way, <clears throat> or when coins fall down a certain way, you're not always going to get a lower, or sorry, a higher low, which will indicate strength being gained. It does not always happen. In fact, I learned that these patterns are very, very unique, where if you just see this type of pattern, where the RSI becomes, like, so this half right here, I would call it a convexed shape, right? So this is a convex shape right here. And this is a, I'm drawing pretty bad, but this is a concave shape. Think of it as symmetric. This is the entrance to a cave door, and that's the opposite of an entrance to a cave door, right? So when you see this type of convex shape on RSI, where you just kind of average it in the middle, there's a very high probability for it to just spike up. And that's what happened here on Wi-Fi for a whopping 300% gain. So we can see these types of patterns in a lot of different other coins. And it gives us a sensation of, hey, I've seen it before, and I've seen it before. Could the same thing actually happen again? So right now, I was calling $32,000 in my previous video, and also here in my private Discord group, simply because of this particular breakout and this apex region right here. It's a very significant area, in my opinion, whether it is there or here around it's roughly above thirty thousand dollars where it's having a significant impact on this level of support that we're finding right now i mean if we look at the next relevant support that we would see it would most likely be down over here at seventeen thousand dollars i think that we've made so much effort to break above that twenty thousand dollar barrier for such a long period of time <coughs> that I don't think we're going to see those particular regions anymore. And if you take a look at the actual Fibonacci retracement, depending on where you draw it from, let's say you draw it from that March of 2020 region, you see it's not even close to the 618 region. But if you draw it around the wave <coughs> of the breakout of the third wave, right, you actually see it hitting right in between the golden ratio section and the golden pocket between 29,300 and 31,000. So we are definitely at a relevant point depending on how we see it. Everyone will draw things in a different manner. But what we do see is that depending on the breakout region that you're choosing your Fibonacci retracement range, it really does show the golden pocket and also the golden ratio. Not only that, these particular points of support right here, everybody sees it as well. This was a very, very long retracement period. This retracement period was over a month until a, finally a breakout eventually happened, which we were all very grateful there back in April, right? We got this gigantic inverted pin bar right here. That's a really good candle. Don't think of it as a rejection. You don't always need to see it over here, right? An inverted hammer. You don't always need to see it at the bottom. Seeing it at the top of a breakout is very indicative as well as strength. Not only that, combined with the volume for that particular day and bouncing above these Fibonacci retracement ranges, right? Oh, sorry, above these uh, this trendline support right here that we're seeing. So this right here was a trendline resistance that was slow for, we'll say, 22, 23 days. So it will act some, as some sort of apex as a breakout for this green line right here, firstly. That's the first line of defense. And then the second line of defense would probably be around the $30,000 range. So I cannot help but think to myself right now that since we have capitulated in a very, very big way, there's a very high chance for us to find some profitability and massive gains in other coins. The number one coin on my mind right now would be Luna. I would never ever short my dog Luna, but I would only go long on it. The main reason that I'm extremely interested in this coin right now, okay, is because I look at the RSI of the 12 hour chart, which reaches 17.5, right? I look at it on the six hour chart, this is at 16. 
I would not recommend leveraging this with everything that you have, but I would recommend spot trading this to anybody because this has the potential for a massive rally. I mean, I keep looking at the one hour chart right here and I do see that it is at 20 RSI. The 30 minute charts at 21. I'm not, I'm not saying there's a good chance it's gonna bounce. I'm saying that because of the RSI being extremely oversold and being one of the coins that's actually harboring way lower RSIs than other coins, there's a higher probability of this gaining a massive amount. If you look at, for example, HBAR, not even close to being in the, in the lower 30s, right? On the three hours, yes, it's at 21, so there's a big chance for that as well. But for some reason, I feel like investing in my dog, Luna, and that's going to bring me a lot of hopes. A lot of people are talking about Matic as well right here, right? So Matic right here is definitely finding some sort of support level where it found support levels before. So let me talk about, for example, Matic and just in general, coins where we would like to long, right? And what we look for in general. So let's start off with Bitcoin first of all, actually. So for example, with Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, the safest way to enter a long, if I were to enter a long, this is not financial advice in any single way whatsoever, okay? So what this is, is just talking about it from the perspective of what I would do and what I would call safe, okay? So actually, this would be a great example. We see many, many different points of resistances where it gets rejected. Therefore, this sloped resistance must be considered as something fairly prominent, right? So therefore, a really good place to enter a, a breakout for me is if it actually breaks above this particular trend line, right? I would probably end up nibbling on it just a little bit. And usually what ends up happening after it breaks out, let's just hypothetically assume that it breaks out sometime very soon, which it may. So usually what it does, it, it reaches a support point somewhere first. So we'll identify them first of all. We don't know exactly which point it's going to break out of, but usually this is what happens, okay? So first of all, let's just say it breaks out right there. It'll most likely do a really good retest that might even be a lower one, a lower one than the slope trend line, because that resistance that it broke out needs to be tested as a support. And then eventually you'll start hammering at it again with higher lows, hammering it again like an ascending triangle type of time. That could easily happen. And then you reach the next point of barrier, right? You can get a low, you can get a test again, but you hammer at it. That's the point. Sometimes you may not even end up getting a resistance in any way on the first one. You just break past it, right? But you end up retesting this particular region that just keeps going. So in my opinion, a really good place to enter where I would be interested in entering is on a retest. But personally myself, right, I do play breakouts, so I will nibble just a little bit on a breakout first. And that's my style. But I'm not gonna go in 100%. I'll nibble a little bit and I will look for a retest. Because all these RSIs are incredibly low right now, and I do believe that Bitcoin will end up affecting pretty much every single coin. And some of the big players are, of course, Matic and, and Luna that's dropping to to catastrophic amounts right now but because they're dropping the most in percentages there's going to be a high probability of it bouncing an extreme amount as well so we've we've seen these types of markets for a while now where it's dropping for example 77 percent right since may may the 10th or so so now we have to assume that there will be eventually some sort of mini bull market because of how oversold everything is and that's going to be our job to enter a market to find something that's gonna give us incredible yields where we can just sit on it for a long time. So just as an example, if we go to Fibonacci retracements over here, right? Even if it got to 382 from where we are right now, that's literally a 120% gain. And that is being the most conservative amount that we could possibly be. So looking for this type of entry on a retest, in my opinion, is going to be extremely important for us to gauge. So I will be very diligent. I will most likely not trade today. I will most likely just end up consulting for the, for the rest of the day. But I will be doing technical analysis. And I will be looking at coins like Luna that will be looking for a breakout somewhere around there. When it breaks out, I will be ready to catch this. And I will make a tremendous amount off of a $30,000 position. Because if I'm playing $30,000 and 
this coin ends up doing 100% from $4 to $8. I don't think I'll be working for the next week or two, put it that way. And this opportunity only comes once in a while. So make sure that we're watching all these trendline supports. Make sure we're watching when it retests these as well. We identify these resistances and supports. Holy cow, it's been 20 minutes already. I was going to go a lot longer. Um, okay, I think I'm done for now. So once again, if you guys are interested in any of my content, okay, if you're interested in just my course, it goes for $150. If you're interested in my course and a year membership for the premium Discord group, it goes for $250. And that's only if it's seen in this video. Anyways, we'll talk soon. Have yourselves a great Sunday. Take care and thank you for watching this video. Bye now.